is more rich and famous, Peyton Manning or Oprah? Don't Google it. Just take a guess and hold on to it. We're going to come back to this. Fame and fortune are two of the most sought-after achievements in the world, but they are also two things that you will never achieve. And I don't mean you personally, I mean anyone, at least basically anyone. There's this phenomenon that I find fascinating, that I refer to as relative wealth or relative fame. Have you ever interacted with someone who is much, much wealthier than you? and thought, wow, you could just hand me $10,000, and it would mean almost nothing to your overall financial situation. But it would absolutely change my life right now. I mean, it's one banana, Michael, but what could it cost? $10? And it's true. But this idea that you're so rich that one small action could change my life is kind of universal. Us regular people think about wealth and fame Pretty simply, it's a variation of the us versus them mentality. There's normal people, us, and then there's rich people, them. And you can do the same thing for famous people, who are also often rich. And we tend to just put them in a clump all together. The reason I got thinking about this is because I was watching a video by Ryan George, who's a wonderful YouTube comedian who you should watch if you haven't already. But a viewer asked him if he had ever thought about being on Hot Ones. Again, a very popular YouTube interview show. And this was Ryan's response. Yeah, I would love to do Hot Ones one day. I'm, I'm just nowhere near that level of famous. If you look at the guests that they have on there, that doesn't make sense to have a, a little YouTuber dude on there. For fans of Ryan George, this seems kind of weird because he is clearly famous and successful with around 3 million subscribers between his two channels. So I sit here with my 1,300 subscribers and think, Wow, Ryan is almost 2,000 times more rich and famous than me. It must be nice. But as Ryan so nicely put it, in the grand scheme of a show like Hot Ones, which has 13 million subscribers, he's small potatoes. And on Hot Ones, they interview real celebrities, household names, from blockbuster movies, which is a whole nother level of famous. And that's the point. No matter what level of fame or of wealth you go to, there is almost always someone higher. And it isn't just in YouTube and movies. It's in everything. I was recently in a meeting with Jason Hewlett. I can maybe even say, my friend Jason Hewlett. But it feels a little ambitious of me to just unilaterally call Jason my friend or even colleague because he seems so far ahead of me. He is one of the youngest people ever inducted into the Speaker Hall of Fame and is an award-winning Las Vegas entertainer. To me, he's one of the big dogs. But in that meeting, he mentioned that the big dogs like Ed Milet or Grant Cardone wouldn't give him the time of day because they are really famous speakers. And I'm sure Ed Milet would say, well, yeah, but I'm not a real celebrity speaker like Oprah or Obama. And on and on it goes. And just to hammer that point home, I know all of those names because I work in the world of professional speaking. But there are good odds that the only names you recognize from that list are Oprah and Obama. The internet makes this whole weirdness about relative fame even more profound. If I give a keynote to a room of two or three thousand people, that is a big event. A huge room where I am reaching a ton of people with my message. If I get two thousand YouTube views on a video, it's not very much. The numbers feel smaller because I'm comparing my video to ones that get 5 million views. This happens with money as well, and it's why comparison and envy are so incredibly dangerous. Because there will always be someone with more than you. When the US child tax credit was announced for anyone making less than $400,000 annually, I would guess that a lot of people were thinking, wow, I'm making $40,000 annually. At $400,000, I don't think I would care that much about the tax credit anymore. But there's something called lifestyle inflation. When you get a raise or make more money, your spending automatically adjusts to meet that increase. It happens subconsciously without you even really noticing it. Sure, some people manage to increase their income 
slightly improve their lifestyle, and then just enjoy financial security. But research shows that the vast majority of us have a very hard time ever being satisfied. The more money we make, the better we get at spending it, and the more money we need in order to feel comfortable. And that same, oh, I'm not as famous as so-and-so, happens with wealth. If you meet someone who you think is rich, they will almost never say, oh, I'm super rich. First, that would sound really arrogant, but that's a much smaller factor than the simple fact that they truly don't believe they are wealthy. One study actually found that 72% of people that have between one and five million dollars don't consider themselves rich. There are a lot of reasons for that. One is that lifestyle inflation we talked about makes it feel like you don't have as much money as you do. But the other one is that as you become more wealthy, you start spending more time and knowing other wealthy people, even wealthier people. And compared to them, you feel poor. Once the numbers get big, they all start blurring together for us peasant folk. But the math is nuts. This is one of my favorite examples. Peyton Manning is rich. Yes, please say yes out loud to your phone or computer. Of course he is. And over and over, people ask him why he doesn't buy an NFL franchise. And he is interested in buying an NFL franchise, but he is nowhere near that level of rich. His net worth is around $300 million. And NFL teams are more in the five to 10 billion range. For perspective, if you had $10 billion, you would make more than $300 million every year in interest alone. That's how big $10 billion is. For Peyton to own any part of an NFL franchise, he would need to get into part of an owner's group with other people who make more money every year simply by existing than he has made in his entire life put together. And you can see how that might make you feel poor. The other thing that gets interesting when you start peeking into the perspective of the rich and famous is that everything gets measured in net worth. And net worth is a weird metric. A lot of super rich people are super rich because they own shares of big companies, not because they have Scrooge McDuck swimming pools of gold. They often have notably less usable money than their net worth because you can't spend your net worth without selling your stuff. This is often how small business owners are. Sure, you may own 100% of a company that is hypothetically valued at a million dollars, but unless you sell that company, you don't have a million dollars. Even if you sold the company, Depending on your age, a million dollars isn't enough for you to pay all of the taxes and fees and then retire even remotely comfortably. So you keep going to work and getting a paycheck, even though on paper, your net worth says that you are well beyond a millionaire. The reason I wanted to talk about all this is because it's a comparison game that we all do, and it's easier to avoid if you know that you're doing it. I truly believe that comparison is the thief of joy, and I see it in myself. I look at people who are ahead of me and I think, oh, if I were just where they were, then I would be content. Then I'd be happy. I'd be satisfied. But that usually isn't the case. There will always be someone ahead of you. and You will often want what they seem to have. Jason and Kim Kateki call this a must-be-nice shame spiral, which is a wonderful term just like they are wonderful people. It's the idea where you can always find someone to look at and say, it must be nice to be where they are. And the late Sean Stevenson famously said, compare leads to despair. So, back to the question from the beginning of the video. Is Oprah or Peyton Manning more rich or famous? It turns out it isn't even close. Oprah is so much wealthier than Peyton Manning. Like, 10 times wealthier. She is one of those people that makes more money every year than Peyton Manning has accumulated through his entire life. But did you know that? Of course not, because it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter to him, it shouldn't matter to her, and it most definitely doesn't matter to you. So get out there and become as rich and famous as you want to be. But don't worry about where everyone else is by comparison. It'll help you avoid the must-be-nice shame spiral and make the world a much better place.